Krishna Kanabi from the Michael J. Fox Foundation's Research Communications Team, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Dr. Marco Baptista, Vice President of Research Programs. Welcome, Marco. Hi, Krishna. So today we're going to talk about LERC2, which is an important area of Parkinson's research and a priority for the Foundation. So let's start with the basics. What is LERC2 and why does it matter? So we know since 2004 that mutations in the LERC2 gene increase the kinase activity of that gene, uh, thereby increasing the risk of Parkinson's disease. So it's become a very important drug target. Okay. So I know that LERC2 is overactive in people with a mutation. What about people without? Yeah, there's been some uh, recent evidence also indicating that non-mutation carriers also have increased LERC2 kinase activity. So I think drug discoverers are now seeing that there is potential, not just in being able to treat those that are carriers of the mutation, but also non-carriers and therefore the majority of Parkinson's patients. Okay. So if overactivity seems to be involved with the disease, would tamping it down, sort of lessening that overactivity be a potential treatment strategy? Correct. That is a strategy. So the strategy now is that there is potentially a two to three fold increase in LARC2 kinase activity that is causing death to cells in the brain and therefore having an inhibitor to reduce that aberrant kinase activity should help Parkinson's patients. Great. So I know that several years ago, this area of drug research was nearly derailed. Can you tell us what happened? Yeah, so we initially at the Michael J. Fox Foundation, we were working with Genentech mm -hmm. and we published work back in 2015 in Science Translational Medicine, uh, showing that two LARC2 kinase inhibitors of a similar structural class uh, were able to produce this abnormal lung phenotype that you can see under a microscope. Because of that work, there was some hesitation, I think, of moving forward into the clinic because of some potential lung toxicity. And there were some gaps that weren't fully answered in that paper. And that was what initiated us to build a consortium um, to address those. We were able to withdraw these drugs and show that the, it was not a permanent effect and the lungs went back to normal. And we were able to test lung function with a battery of tests. Uh, and in these preclinical models, these battery of tests are easily translatable in humans. And we also found that the LARC2 kinase inhibitors, even though they were inducing this mild effect in the lungs, had no effect on lung, lung function. Okay, so I don't have a PhD, so I didn't understand all of that. But what I'm getting is that the side effects appear manageable. So through the LERC2 Safety Initiative, we were really able to keep this area of drug research moving forward. So since then, what's happened in LERC2 uh, therapeutic research? So the only way to really get at understanding if the inhibitors are working in the brain, which is the target organ that we're looking at, um, is through uh, cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF. And uh, that's been a bit of a, a challenge, and that's you know, the latest work that we're, we're trying to uh, get an answer to. I know there are several clinical trials now of LERC2 therapeutics. Can you tell us about those? Yes, it's very exciting right now. So we have uh, two companies that are now in the clinic, uh, Denali being the first mm -hmm. company to go into the clinic with LERC2 kinase inhibitors, and they have two, two inhibitors that they've been testing. I believe they've tested now in over 150 individuals with no serious adverse events. So this, I think, helps sort of confirm the work that we've been doing preclinically, that it's not a showstopper, um, these lung findings, and you can go into the clinic. And uh, lastly, there's a, a company, uh, Biogen, which they're now in the clinic with a, a different therapeutic approach. So very exciting times. Yeah, that is seem like great news for patients. So these LERC2 drugs medications are being tested in people right now, and they seem to not have those safety concerns that we were worried about. Correct, and, and the whole point of conducting these clinical trials is to really figure out if there, there are gonna be any issues and mm -hmm. testing in a lot of, in a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I think what we helped to do was sort of facilitate it so that these critical human safety studies can occur. Great, well thank you so much, Marco, for joining us today and helping us understand this incredibly important area of the foundation's portfolio. Thank you, Krishna. And thank you all for joining us. To learn more about LERC2, our research programs, and how you can help speed a cure for Parkinson's, visit michaeljfox.org.